Hello everyone, my name is Michael, and I have the opportunity to go over our Book of Philippians chapter three overview. Now, in your growth book, you're gonna see um, that there's an intro that kind of talks about chapter three, and I'm gonna read that right now. And it says, in chapter three, Paul condemns false confidence in one's achievements and boldly declares even his own credentials are worthless in comparison to fellowship with Christ. For this reason, Christ is to be the sole focus of the believer. This sets up Paul's final greeting and instruction in chapter four. And so as we begin to read Philippians chapter three and go into that in our growth book, um, if you look at the top of each segment, actually, you're going to see that it says to pray and ask God for revelation to speak to us and show us what the scripture is saying. And that's what we're going to do right now before we actually go through. Now, I'm just going to read through the whole chapter of chapter three, and I'm just going to give you an example of what that would look like. Um, we're going to pray first. Right. But as I'm reading through, I'm just going to as God begins to show me some things in the scripture, I may stop and share with you what I feel God is showing me in the scripture. And we'll just read through the whole chapter. But I want to encourage you to do the same thing. But let's start out with prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word. And as we begin to read uh, chapter three of the book of Philippians, I pray, Father, that you would just give revelation. You speak to us. Um, let us see, Lord, what your word is saying. If there's any insight that you want to give, Holy Spirit, give us. Give us that insight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I have um, the book of Philippians uh, chapter 3. And I'm going to uh, begin to read. And this is Paul talking to the Philippian church. And he's actually writing a letter uh, from jail, actually. And so... It starts out by saying this, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Now, this is this is pretty cool because he's actually writing from prison. And Paul is saying, whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord. Somebody who's writing a letter from prison is telling the church to rejoice in the Lord. Right. I never get tired of telling you these things and I do it to safeguard your faith. So he's saying, I never get tired of telling you these things. So this is an implication that he's actually going to repeat himself on a couple of things that he has said in previous chapters. Right. And so but he's saying that I never get tired of telling you, but I'm telling you so that you can be safeguarded. So he's saying, watch out for this. Watch out. It starts in verse two It's crazy. Watch out for those dogs. Whoa. Those people who do evil. Those uh, mutilators who say you should be circumcised to be saved. So uh, once again, Paul has mentioned this previously and he's telling them, watch out for these people that are going around. There's a group of Jews that are that are still going around saying after Christ has come, given his life. And we know that the way that we're saved is through faith in Jesus. These even the Philippian church knew this. But there's still some Jews going around saying the way to be saved is to actually be circumcised. So so Paul is saying, watch out for these guys. He he calls them mutilators for we worship by the spirit of God and are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. I love this because Paul is saying our complete trust is in Christ. The ones who have put their faith in Jesus received his Holy Spirit, which renews us, which actually makes us new, right? Which actually transforms us. We are the ones who are truly circumcised. Just because you get circumcised outwardly, it doesn't make you actually write with God. What makes you write with God is that you have received by faith what Jesus Christ has done. So this is what this is what uh, Paul is saying in verse four. It goes, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. 
verse 5, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. Paul's going running down the credentials now. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there were or, or ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees. Wow, Paul was actually a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience of the Jewish law. Verse six, I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. As, a, as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. And so Paul just ran down his credentials and he goes, man, if anybody was right or righteous because of works or human effort, it's me. I mean, I'm like, like, like I see Paul like basically saying I was the man, right? But in verse seven, he goes, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. There it is. Yes, everything else is worthless when you compare it with the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. And this is it. This is what we're talking about. This is one of the main topics, I believe, of this chapter is Paul is saying that, you know, there's people who are really pushing human effort to be saved. But but I love how Paul and you're going to see how he continues to reiterate Jesus, Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus, faith in Jesus, faith in knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus. Right. Not human effort not trying to live out the law. He's going to continue to point to Jesus. I love that. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted it as garbage so that I could gain Christ. Let's, let's read uh, verse nine and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Right. So it's not our works. It is faith in Jesus Christ. And this is this is what I found to be true is that is that when we put our faith in Christ, when we have relationship with him, I love what Paul said. He said, I want to become one with him. And this is the truth. When we put our faith in him, his Holy Spirit comes in us, makes us new. We become one with him. We begin to please God. We live a life that is righteous in God's eyesight. Why? Because now we're in Christ. And who is Christ? Christ is the righteousness of God. So we become righteous. I want to know Christ and experience this is verse, verse 10. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Who's that mighty power? Holy Spirit. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. Verse 11, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things, that I have already reached perfection. So I, I love uh, Paul's honesty. He's going, man, I, I haven't made it. I'm still I'm still trying here. I'm still pushing here. I'm still pressing. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. So Jesus possessed me through what he did. He actually became my savior as I received him. He died for me so that I can now be perfected in him. That's the key. I now through Jesus can be perfected in him. And that word perfected, it just means to be complete, brought to completion, done, finished, become everything that God wants me to be. Right. And verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I love that. The Paul said, now, you know what? I'm forgetting the past. There's some hurtful things that have happened in my past. There may be some regrets. But 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 now Paul goes, I'm pressing towards who God has called me to be and who God is making me to be. 
He goes on verse 14, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. I'm pressing, I'm pressing towards that call of God. I'm pressing, and this is the only way that we're going to be able to make it to where God has taken us, through Christ Jesus. I'm not gonna get higher through my own efforts. I'm gonna get higher through my faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, it says, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you, right? In verse 16, it says, we must hold on to the progress we have already made. So don't go backwards. Hold on to the progress you've already made. Let's examine our lives and see, is there an area in our lives where we're going backwards? We're not holding on to progress. At one point, we were teaching the word of God. We were on fire for God. But then, you know, now maybe we're not as on fire. We're not teaching the word of God like we used to. You know, what Paul is saying is hold on to the progress. When you move forward, don't regress. Hold on to the progress. Dear brothers, in verse 17, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many of those whose conduct show that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19, they are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think about this life here on this earth. And so let's make sure what I see there is just let's make sure that we we're not just focused on things on the earth, but that we are kingdom minded believers, disciples of Jesus are kingdom minded. What does that mean that that we're focused on the things that Christ was focused on when he walked the earth? What was those main things? What was that main thing? Souls. Right. Verse 20 says, but we are citizens of heaven. Wow. Where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own. Hallelujah. Using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. And so the same power that's going to make every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord is going to actually transform our mortal bodies into a glorious body like Jesus's body. And so this is the end of, of, of chapter three. I, I pray you enjoyed it. And I just went through and just shared some revelations that that I believe God gave me in the scripture. But um, I pray you do the same. Just just go through and whatever God shows you, jot it down. There's an area there in the growth book where you can jot down what God is showing you about the scripture. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Uh-huh.